Today is 30 August 2013. I am interviewing Wilbur Joseph Messier at his home in West Hartford, Connecticut. The interviewer is Buckley W. Morgan II, working with Central Connecticut State University. Also present is Lucille, Wilbur's wife. So, Wilbur, for the record, please state your full name, date of birth, city and state in which you live. Okay, Wilbur J. Messier. West Hartford, Connecticut. Um, date of birth? 92623. Okay, and Wilbur, which war did you serve? World War II, United States Marine Corps. Okay, and what was your highest rank, Wilbur? Highest rank was sergeant. So, in, in what general locations did you serve in the Marines? Had three weeks of boot camp in Paris Island, got on a troop train, went to San Diego, got off the train onto a ship, and went into Guadalcanal in 1942. Wilbur, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted in the Marine Corps. And, uh, Where were you living at that time? I lived in, I was uh, born and brought up in Manchester, Connecticut. And I lived there when I went into the service. Uh, Why did you decide to join the service? It was the thing to do in those days. Uh, the war was just, we were just starting to get offensive. And, uh, I just uh, joined the Marine Corps. A lot of boys were doing it then, were joining up to the war. Yeah. I had three weeks of boot camp in Paris Island and got aboard a troop train and went to San Diego, got off the, the uh, train and onto a ship and we went in and went into Guadalcanal. Uh, Tell me, why did you pick the Marines? Why, why that over like the Army or Army Air Force? Was the, uh, just a thing to do. <laughs> no specific reason. No. Okay. Um, do you remember your first days uh, in in service at, at uh, what was it? You went to. 29 Palms, is that where he was at? No, I was at the Paris Island, North Carolina. We spent three weeks in boot camp, and uh, we got on a troop train to San Diego, mm -hmm. and then we got into San Diego. There was a ship waiting for us. It was pretty well loaded, so we were uh, we were assigned the deck. We were we stayed outside because the ship was full, mm -hmm. and we went to uh, New Hebrides Island. Where yeah, what was that? New New Hebrides. How, how would you spell that? Uh, uh, Hebrides or Liberties? Heb H. Okay. So you went, you went to New Hebrides Island? Yeah, and then we changed from one ship to another and went into Guadalcanal. And what was, uh, what was, what did you do there? Well, the Japanese were there and we had to get them out. So, what? so I was in the 1st Marine Division. You were, you were an infantryman? Yeah, oh yeah. In the infantry and uh, what do you remember about the Guadalcanal? Any any significant? I mean, you were involved in some battles, I would guess. Oh yes, 
but uh, nothing of. I was never wounded. I was n- n- never seriously hurt at all. Uh, I eventually caught malaria and acute yellow jaundice, but so did everybody else. And uh, that's about it. Yeah. Um, with regard to your unit that you were there with, uh, did most everybody make it out okay, or were there, were uh, there some losses? There were some losses, but not too bad. So can, can you describe a, a typical day for you there? Either, well, let's go to basic training. Do you remember your basic, you, can you describe a typical, typical day in your basic training when you were going through basic? We spent most of the time on the rifle range. Uh, we, we were only in basic training three weeks. And usually it's several weeks. So they were doing abbreviated basic, abbreviated basic training so they could get you get get us out. right because the first Marine Division needed support needed reinforcements and uh, that's what you were. That's where I was. <laughs> I, I did catch uh, malaria and acute yellow jaundice. Spent some time in a hospital in Auckland, New Zealand. Do you remember how long you were in the hospital? I can't now. But you, you say a lot of the a lot of your fellow soldiers were also caught the malaria also. Oh yeah. So how did you stay in touch with family while you were in the service? Just by letter. By letter. Uh, what they, I can't remember what they called it. They had a special name for the uh, letters that we sent. I can't remember what it is now. You didn't have to put postage on your letters, did you? No. Like military postal system or something like that? Yeah, no. So, after Guadalcanal and after the malaria, where did you go next? You were in for a total of how many years? Three, I think. Three years. Maybe, maybe four, but uh, I had malaria and yellow jaundice. I spent quite a bit of time in a hospital in Auckland, New Zealand. Mm-hmm. They had a racetrack that they changed into a hospital. Oh, really? And uh, they were still training the horses with that we could watch. So where did you go after that? Uh, you got a hospital. Did you go back to Guadalupe now or did you go uh, somewhere else? Uh, I came back to San Diego and uh, most of my time was in San Diego. After that, from that point on, it was, okay. And what did you do in San Diego? Nothing. (laughs) Nothing. We had minor training, but uh, we were... Mostly assigned, we were mostly in the hospital. Uh, you were mostly it, in, in the hospital doing doing what, or as, as patients or, or working? No, that's where we were patients. They changed the uh, racetrack into a hospital. And uh, 
we were recovering from uh, malaria and yellow jaundice, and we could watch them race the horses, train them. I guess that was better than being on the front lines, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you keep a, uh, a journal at all? No, I, I kept very, very little. I have no, no souvenirs. I just didn't want any. While you were in the service, did you see any what did you do for entertainment? Did you see any USO shows? Or? Oh, they had the USO shows and they had movies and they had uh, things of that type. Did you go to any of the USO shows yourself? Oh, yeah. Do you remember who you saw? No. no. Uh, what was the food like while you were in the service? Uh... Typical service food. Uh, I don't think they did too bad a job on how many they had to feed all at once, but uh, it could have been a lot worse than it was. That's a good way to look at it. Um, did you feel any stress or pressure while you're in, in the service, particularly probably going all canal? No, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't have any trouble. Um, so during your service, you got, did you get any leave time, vacation time, liberty time, liberty? Oh, I came home once at, uh, from San Diego. Home to Connecticut, to Manchester? Yeah, I had 30 day leave. When I first came back from overseas, I had a 30-day leave that I spent in Manchester. And then back to San Diego. And uh, there I became an admiral's orderly. Oh, really? And uh, which was... Uh, the best duty you could get. We, uh, we were on, on for four hours and then off for 24 hours. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> not bad at all. And because uh, we could swap with one of the other guys and have a 48 hour pass. Oh, there you go. And uh, we were in, in San Diego at the time, and uh, the, the great duty is, had very little to do, and a lot of time to do it in. <laughs> so the Admiral's orderly, what were some of the tasks that you did, what you did do? We were basically on guard. We were on guard outside the Admiral's office, and uh, we had to make sure that anybody coming in had a right to be there. And uh, we'd be on four hours and off for 24. Wow. So it was great duty. Yeah. So it sounds like you kind of enjoyed your service after you came back to the States. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So besides coming home to uh, Connecticut for, for uh, your 30 days leave, did you, did you get to see anything else uh, while you are in the service? Any other sites or did you do any travel at all? Oh, we traveled the Southern California area. Uh, we had plenty of time to do it, and uh, we took advantage of it. Um, 
was there anything special you did, you know, knowing when you were told that you were going to Guadalcanal? Um, you were told, did you know you were going there when you were in route? You knew where you were going? No, about? we... You just got on the ship? That you got on the to? ship and that's when we found out what we were going. After you got on the ship is when you found yeah. out? Yeah. What did you think about that idea of going on there? I mean, did, that, did was, you have any idea what it meant? Or? Uh... No, that was expected. Um, do you recall any particular, uh, particular humorous or unusual events that happened while you were in the service? Well, I was there. A, uh, a friend of mine had a 1928 Ford convertible. And uh, then he got discharged, and I bought bought it from him for the same price he paid was three hundred dollars. And uh, I had it several months. And it was good transportation. And then I got discharged, and they wanted to send me to uh, the East Coast and discharge me there. Well, I told them that oh, I can't do that because I have a car here and I'm going to drive it home. That was the 1928 Ford convertible. <laughs> so they gave me my discharge there in San Diego, paid me five cents a mile to Connecticut, which amounted to quite a bit of money in those days. And I... Uh, I discharged and I sold the car. And I hitchhiked home from San Diego. Really? And uh, that was a, that was quite an experience. Met a lot of nice people hitchhiking. Uh, had no difficulty. I never, I was let off in some pretty desolate, desolate places. But uh, the next car that came stopped and picked me up. And uh, I had no problems at all. Yes. And so I hitched right home yes. and, and had a very enjoyable time. Saw a lot of things that I wouldn't have seen if I'd taken, a, if I flew or took a train. And uh, all I wanted it was in the fall and I, I wanted to get home for Thanksgiving, and uh, that gave me 30 days to hitchhike across the country, and, and I used it all. Well, that's amazing. I mean, this was before this was before interstates. Oh yeah, this was. I think a lot of people today wouldn't understand what it means to hitchhike across the states back then. Well, I traveled Route Six which went cross country and but it was certainly no highway <laughs> and it went through a lot of little towns and all and I I had a good time hitchhiking home took me out took me a, almost a month to do it because I would stop somewhere for three or four days see what was there mm -hmm. and finally came home for Thanksgiving that must have been a great adventure. Oh, it was. It was a... Yeah. I, I enjoyed that trip very, very much so. Met a lot of great people. Wow. And... Uh, Did you have a big homecoming when you, when you finally got home? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was very well <laughs> welcomed home. Yeah. Yeah, I got into Hartford, and I didn't want to hitchhike back to, to Manchester, so I took the bus to, from Hartford to Manchester. That's amazing. You hitchhiked all the way from, from San Diego to, Man to Hartford, and then took the bus the last... <laughs> the last 10, ten miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, what's so, you, you completed your service? Yeah. Hitchhiked home, had a great adventure. 
What did you do after you got home? What was your life like after that? And then I enrolled in the University of Connecticut. And uh, or what? What did you study? I was in the uh, business administration. Got my degree eventually, and uh, I went to work in the insurance business. And retired from the Aetna. Can't remember how long ago, but uh, not too long ago. Your uh, your schooling was that paid for by because. Oh yeah, military? the, the, the yeah. GI Bill of Rights, and that. Uh, I lived at home and commuted. There were three of us together, and we. Three of you going to school together? Yeah. Three and, were they your your brothers and sisters, or just three friends? Oh, just friends. Okay. Unfortunately, they're uh, they're gone. Did you make any uh, close friendships while you were in the service that you that you kept for? Not, no, not, not uh, I did not 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 related to the service. No. How did the, your military experience, how did that, how do you feel that shaped your life and your future? Do you think it had a, a big impact or a little impact? Uh, oh, maybe I grew up a little faster, but uh, I didn't find anything out of the ordinary. I mean, it, uh, so I was in the service. Oh, the, what was wrong with that? What was different than everybody else was? And I got discharged and uh, I went, went to the University of Connecticut, graduated in 49, I think, I'm not sure. And uh, life went on. Have you have you joined any veterans organizations, VFW or no? American Legion? I uh, none of them really interested me. Uh, I wasn't uh, attached to the service at all. All right, so you kind of did your time, did did your commitment, and then moved on. Right. Well, Uber, is there anything you'd like to add that, that we've not discussed here? No, I uh, went through college on the GI Bill. At, uh, graduated in, I can't remember, I think 49, but I'm not sure, from the University of Connecticut. Went to work in the insurance business and retired from the Aetna, and here I am today. Living the good life. Yeah. Well, Wilbur, I'd like to thank you for your service, and I want to thank you for giving us your time doing this interview for us. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. I think it's, uh, it's important for oral history to be kept. Yeah.